Hi, welcome to Leader Feeder. I'm Suzanne Jakes, Marketing Coordinator at Unique Training and Development, and I'm here with Kirk Langford, our General Manager. Hey, hey Kirk, how's it going today? I'm good, how are you, Suzanne? Yeah, it's a little chilly out there today. Yeah, it is, it is, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> a little blistery for uh, oh. this time of year. Um, so, I'm going to be honest, today's topic mm -hmm. uh, is called Asynchronous versus Synchronous Learning, mm -hmm. and <laughs> I don't quite understand what that is, so maybe you yeah. can help us out today, yeah. maybe for any of our listeners who also don't understand yeah. what that is, maybe you could explain a bit and maybe yeah. we could start, well, I guess we could just start with what both of those things yeah, are, sure, or sure. if you want to do the definition of yeah. each, you let's, know? Let's do that. Yeah, that, that's a, a good point. It's one of those, it's it's a couple of those big words that sound really scary and terrifying. Yeah. That's actually not, not too <laughs> bad. So. Part of my background, funny enough, is in linguistics. So I love looking at words and how they're made up and whatnot. So if we look at the word synchronous, you can see in there, there's the word sync, right? Like, mm -hmm. like to synchronize something, right? Like my phone, I'm that, syncing my right. iPhone all yeah, the time. That's right, yeah. <laughs> and it's the same idea there. So the idea uh, of sync is that we're together, right? At the same time, kind of simultaneous. Whereas asynchronous, we still have sync there, but we have the A, so it's sort of not at the same time. Okay. Essentially what we're talking about when we talk about synchronous learning versus asynchronous learning is synchronous learning happens when the instructor or the teacher and the students are together learning at the same time. That's the okay. sync part, right? The okay. synchronized. Yep. Asynchronous is when they're not happening at the same time. So let me give you an example with our Yeah, own. That, I was just going <laughs> to yeah, ask. Yeah. Not at the same yeah. time, but so we're training. You, okay. yeah. Yeah. So an example within our, own, uh, within our own training, right? We do different types of leadership training here. Mm -hmm. We have our um, on-site in-person training, right? So the instructor is there. Yeah. The learners are there. Mm -hmm. They're in the classroom. They're doing their learning together, right? The teacher asks a question gets an answer right mm -hmm. then and there. That's synchronous learning. Same thing happens if we do our, if we're using our virtual training studio, right? Even though it's virtual, like the right. participants yes. are either at home or at the office. And it's in and real our, time. Yeah, and it, but yeah, it's in it's real time. There. It's happening yeah. at the same time. Think of asynchronous. You could use the example of our on-demand training platform, oh. right? Students go in, yeah. they learn, they watch the videos and do the activities when they want, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And the instructor's not there at the same time with them. Right. So that's asynchronous. So for example, the instructor might mark an assignment later on uh, or provide okay. feedback later on. That's the idea of asynchronous. I learning. imagine that there's going to be pros and cons to each of those. Yes. And I feel like I can already see some of the cons with the asynchronous. Mm -hmm. So the one where mm -hmm. they're learning on their own mm -hmm. without the instructor right there, mainly mm -hmm. because how would you keep people on pace, actually <laughs> learning, like are, are yeah. we tracking this? Like, Yeah, yeah. so it, it is an interesting, uh, maybe not conundrum, but there, you're right, there are pros and cons to both synchronous and asynchronous. Mm -hmm. So if I were to start with synchronous learning in terms of pros yeah. and cons, I think part of the, maybe what seems more obvious is just the idea that everyone's there together, right? The teacher and the learner, they're all there together. So for example, if the learner is learning a con concept and it's a little bit tricky or a little bit hard for them, they can just raise their hand and say, hey, right. I have a question. This doesn't Absolutely. make sense. They get their question answered kind of right away. Right. That's pretty pretty mm -hmm. convenient as a learner, right? And even as a teacher, it's convenient or as an instructor because you don't have to wait to answer the question later. You get to deal with it right in the moment. Mm -hmm. So if you're learning maybe a complex concept and you have a question in the middle of that topic, it might be hard to, to finish the topic or to want to even finish it because you might think, well, I want to get my question answered before yep. I do the rest of this so that it all because makes sense Because it might help you. Yeah, it, like, yeah exactly. you think it might help you, right? Exactly. So that's a huge benefit of synchronous learning, right? You've okay. got the teacher or the instructor there to ask questions in the moment. Yeah, what about the the cons? Tell yeah, me the cons. Yeah, so I mean, well, the, the cons are that... Are there any? Th I mean, no. there are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, there are. Think of, think of a production setting or a manufacturing setting where you've got uh, a shift of people and you want to keep production running at maximum capacity. With synchronous oh. learning, if you have to pull people, for example, yep. off the line to go sit in a classroom with a teacher. I didn't even think of that. You might have to stop course, running the line. Right? And, and you don't want to do that if you can help it, right? Organizations don't want to shut down equipment right. uh, any longer than they really need to. Right. So, Depending on how big these organizations are and how many right. shifts that they have to... Right. Well, I mean, a number of our clients, they might have, right. for example, 120 people or more on a particular shift. Mm -hmm. So imagine having to pull all of those people off. All the equipment and machinery just sits quiet, essentially while you try to get these people trained on something. Right. It can be, a, you know, you're, you're putting the organization back. Yes, you're providing training, which right. is important, but, but you prefer not to have any downtime if you could prevent it. So that's where yeah. synchronous learning has the downside. I guess in that manner, you'd really have to level out like, 
what's more beneficial. Yeah, that's Pulling right. people from the line and yeah. training them. Um, but, yeah. I mean, I suppose, like we had just said, if it's a larger company, that might be more beneficial to pull yeah. people. They bring in other people to do yeah. the shift, but smaller yeah. companies might have a harder yeah. time with and, that. And it even depends on what you're training on, right? I mean, if you're training on a more technical skill or something, it might make sense to to use sort of a a uh, sort of asynchronous, let them do it on their own time. You know, I, I remember actually, um, you know, Tim Horton's a big uh, sandwich and donut shop and cafe uh, franchise here in Canada. Mm -hmm. that a lot of Canadians, of course, will know and, and our American friends as well. Um, I, I had a friend that used to work there and one of the things she mentioned was when they introduce a new sandwich or a new wrap or a new bowl, the way you're actually trained on it initially is asynchronously. So what that means is that uh, they upload the module into their learning, uh, their LMS or their learning management system, kind of their learning okay. platform. It's an online system. Yeah. And um, you're expected to go through the course and so it shows you, okay, here's how you make the sandwich and here's what you put on it and you know, here's mm -hmm. how you cut it and mm -hmm. all those pieces that go into making a sandwich correctly yeah. and consistently from one location to the other because that's another important and piece. And very important right? for Tim and, Hortons, yes. Yeah, well, and for, really for any uh, organization, uh, you know, specifically and particularly when we talk about manufacturing, consistency is so important, all the right? the specs, right? That's right, yeah. And so anyway, if we go back to that sandwich example, um, that was asynchronous learning. They were required to watch the video or complete the online training module, uh, you know, separately, not while they were working. Right. And then when they came to work, they'd be able to ask questions about, hey, in the video, I noticed it was this. So are you sure you want this sauce and not this right. sauce? Or do you want it cut this way or this way? They were then able to kind of ask questions. So that initially happened via asynchronous learning. Um, as opposed to synchronous learning so that okay. they didn't have to take time during someone's shift right. to pull them away to say, hey, go and watch this video to learn this this sandwich or right. this. So that's this good an example of asynchronous. Mm -hmm. um, so that kind of leads us now into asynchronous mm -hmm. pros and cons mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. to, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, the first pro is obviously kind of the opposite of the con of synchronous learning. So that sounds complex, but what I mean is that yeah. you don't want to pull people off the line. You don't want to shut down. You don't want to have downtime right. with asynchronous learning. You don't have to, right? Mm -hmm. Because I can say, hey, uh, you know, at the end of your shift or maybe before the shift, I want you to all go on and do this online training. Right. Um, I mean, keeping in mind, you can also do synchronous learning in, in non-online ways. So for example, it might be, I mean, Writing, writing an assignment, doing homework at school, that was mm -hmm. asynchronous learning because the teacher wasn't right there in front of you. So that's, that's a more uh, kind of traditional example of asynchronous learning. But I think in our day to day, what we're seeing is asynchronous learning is usually more equated with online learning in some fashion. Right. So that's, okay. that's a huge pro is that you can provide training to people at uh, different times and people can do it at their own pace. So if you have a learner that needs to reread things or rewatch right. videos, wants to take copious notes because that helps them learn, for yep. example, um, they can watch that video or that module as many times as mm -hmm. they want. Whereas another learner uh, that maybe picks it up quicker, they can watch it once, know right. what they need to know and move forward. So there's a lot, uh, often with asynchronous learning, it can move a lot more at the learner's pace, which is a benefit to the learner. Right, thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for that. I think yeah. I'm getting a better understanding of, mm -hmm. you know, the difference between the two, which yeah. is great. Mm -hmm. um, and you kind of touched base on the benefit of learners being able to go at their own pace. Mm -hmm. So that's something now that companies need to take into consideration mm -hmm. uh, when they are looking at training, right? Yeah. Like, so what other key components are companies going to need to look at to decide what might be mm -hmm. best for their company? Yeah. Well, I mean, the one we, we, we've already talked about that I think is particularly important is just availability of the, of the employees, of, of the people who need the right. training. Can I pull right. a whole shift off the line? Can I have that much downtime? Uh, if not, then I might have to stagger the training mm -hmm. into different groups or different sessions. Uh, if I can take them all off the line, that can be convenient right. as well. Or, I imagine you know, that also ties into budget a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that absolutely yeah. can, yeah. Okay. Um, so that's one consideration. I think the other consideration, like you mentioned, are the individual learners. You know, do you have a workforce that, for whatever reason, they prefer online learning to do it at their own pace when they mm -hmm. want to? Right. Um, you might have organizations where staff aren't expected to complete any, uh, any training outside of working hours. So then in that case... You could do synchronous learning perhaps because they're not going to be completing online training uh, at home or something like that after a shift. At the same time, if you need flexibility, asynchronous, asynchronous learning, pardon me, is usually your best bet, right? Because people can complete it on their own uh, when it's convenient for them and they can take sort of as long as they need to uh, within reason. Um, and I think another benefit or rather, sorry, another factor to think about is simply... Um, 
how much you want to get out of it. And what I mean by that is generally speaking in asynchronous learning, learners tend to say, I didn't get as much out of it. I prefer having an instructor in the classroom with me mm -hmm. asking questions. Mm -hmm. You know, if you think about learning on your own, uh, it's pretty hard to do group activities. It's pretty hard to do right. sort of role playing exercises, case studies, stuff like that's a little bit more challenging uh, and sometimes even impossible in an asynchronous learning environment where this, where it's just kind of one learner at their computer, right? right. Or on a tablet or a device. So if you're looking for something more engaging, uh, more interactive, you know, you want to do role playing and that kind of thing, mm -hmm usually synchronous learning is going to be where it's at. So yeah. those are some considerations you want to think about when trying to decide whether it makes sense to do something like uh, asynchronous. So for example, our on-demand platform, or whether you want to do more of that instructor-led live uh, training. Right. Oh, yeah. well, yeah. thanks so much. That's yeah. great. I feel like one of the other things <clears throat> that we tend to talk about mm -hmm. here in the Leader Feeder uh, is measuring impact because... <laughs> yeah. We all know, yeah. everybody wants to know, you know, how are we measuring the impact? Um, what's going to come out of all mm -hmm. of this training? How is it going mm -hmm. to impact, impact employees? Yeah. Um, can you speak a little bit about, you know, the KPIs, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's a little, it's, it's, I suppose it depends on the organization, right? At the end of the day, it's what they need. But I think you would find that in terms of an ROI, um, and I think when we think about ROI with training, I think it's sort of not just uh, did they like the training, but did they actually take something from the training, implement it into their day to day and become better leaders or better employees because of it. Right. So if it was safety training, for example, you know, are the people doing it safer? Are there fewer accidents? Mm -hmm. Right. If you did a session in communication, uh, do you have fewer employees saying, yeah, I feel like my leader doesn't fill me in on what's going on. You know, I feel more in the know. Yeah. So I think generally speaking, what you find is that synchronous learning. So again, when you've got the instructor there at the same time, mm -hmm. uh, tends to be where employees or, or those learning would say, I got more out of it, mm -hmm. right? I, the, the takeaway was stronger. And part of the reason is because we know in the learning world, experiential learning, which is sort of learning by doing, learning through experiences yeah. rather than learning through reading or learning through watching, those tend to be the most powerful. And experiential learning is harder to do online. Now, it's not, it's not impossible, right. but it is a little bit more challenging. And so because experiential learning tends to be more impactful and we tend to see a greater kind of retention of the ideas, they remember it longer, it sticks with them. Mm -hmm. You know, we do a couple of, of really interactive, engaging activities in our training, as you know. And those are the ones that sometimes years later, right. people go, oh, They're I remember we remember. did that with frontline leadership. Yeah, I remember when you guys came and did that. You know, oh, that right. was really memorable. And I think it's honestly because they were able to really grasp the learning in a very real way. Right. And then they were, are able, more, more likely rather, to be able to apply it, okay? Right. And so I think what you find in terms of ROI is you get a better ROI um, from synchronous training. Right. And yet asynchronous training is often just more practical for organizations, right? Yep. It's more feasible and, and easier and quicker to implement in Great. some cases. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I'm going to put you on the spot right now. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> you gave us an example of uh, asynchronous training mm -hmm. with Tim Hortons. Do you have one for synchronous? Is there a, an, an mm. example or a case study that you can think about? Yeah. Where um, I mean, an actual case study, no, not necessarily. Sorry, well, I right. I know that's yeah. okay. I, but, yeah. I doubt you did a lot of research. <laughs> what, what I would say is really think of, you know, anytime you're doing like often, um, you know, when you have to go in for that health and safety workshop, right, that a lot of organizations do, mm. that sort of thing is very much synchronous learning. The teacher is kind of sitting there, they're going maybe through some slides or, you know, first aid training is actually a really good example of synchronous learning usually. Uh, I, I know here in Canada, we're starting to see what we would call a blended approach where you're expected to do asynchronous learning for a certain portion of the training. So the first half of it might be you have to read parts from the first aid manual, yeah. you have to know certain things, you'd have to be able to maybe even pass a knowledge test before you actually go to the in-person uh, part of the first aid training. So that's actually a neat situation where they've taken what used to be almost only synchronous. So it was only in person mm -hmm. with the instructor. You know, they show you to do how to CPR. They show you how to wrap a wrap a, a bandage, uh, you know, around someone. They show you how to do a tourniquet. All of those things, right? right? Um, they've taken that and they've made it where part of it is asynchronous. It's kind of considered like prep work to, to get ready for mm -hmm. the in-person synchronous part of the course. So that's a very typical example. 
Another example is something like what we do with our leadership training. Right. So where we have people come in uh, into sessions and we teach them things like conflict management. We teach them how to give effective feedback. We teach them about what are the expectations of a leader, um, how to lead by example. So yeah. in those situations, when we're doing those interactive, engaging activities, those are synchronous examples, synchronous learning examples. Yeah. The blending sounds like a like a really fun idea actually yeah, i yeah. mean that can you i feel like you would almost get best of both worlds yeah i think i think it's really a great option for organizations right. because honestly what it provides is those organizations that might say hey if i just give everybody one more online course that they're expected to take mm -hmm. if it's not that engaging potentially if if there's people that just don't really like online learning it can right. be a little bit uh discouraging for them maybe not as motivating mm. or engaging but we can have examples where instead of the first aid situation where we start with asynchronous and then we end with synchronous, you can actually do the opposite where you say, let's kick off the training with a really great in-person session that's engaging, some experiential learning, and then let's follow yeah. up with some online uh, modules, for example, great idea. that provide reinforcement. So you can right. have situations like that and that provides flexibility to the organization. Yeah. Yeah, well, that sounds really great. Thanks so much, Kirk, for sharing your thoughts today on synchronous and asynchronous yeah. learning. Um, I know I learned a lot, so mm -hmm. hopefully some of our listeners did too. Yeah, great. Take care, everyone. Bye.